Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar on Meridian's personnel management kiosks. We're going to start off with just a brief overview of Meridian, who we are, what we do, um, and then we'll jump into the hardware and the software aspects of the PMK. We will have a question and answer session at the end. Um, if you have any questions that you've already brought with you to the webinar, feel free to start submitting them whenever you're ready. Um, once we reach the conclusion of the presentation, we will read them off to our panel um, and we will get your questions answered. Today on the Meridian panel, we have myself, Melissa Harward, um, our industrial designer, Dominic Adebel, and then our director of software, Paul Burden. Starting off just a little bit about Meridian, Meridian is a fully integrated manufacturer of indoor and outdoor kiosks, interactive digital signage, and self-service software. We've been in the self-service solutions and kiosk industry for more than 20 years, and we develop all of our products and services under one roof. We design, engineer, manufacture, and integrate all of our hardware and software solutions in-house. We have a full-scale production facility at our Aberdeen, North Carolina headquarters, a 13-acre manufacturing campus, a full metal fabrication facility, and we are ISO 9001-2015 certified, as well as a UL self-certified facility. In addition to our Aberdeen headquarters, we have a full software development department in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Jumping right into the personnel management kiosk, we'll start out with the hardware aspect. The personnel management kiosk is designed to help protect the health and safety of employees and their guests by helping to prevent anyone with a temperature or those without access from entering a facility. Some of the high-level features of the personnel management kiosk include temperature verification, facial identification, temperature threshold alarms, and it's available in an anodized aluminum finish as well as pedestal and soon-to-be countertop configurations. to be having a bit of a delay with the presentation on our side. Give me just one moment and I will get that resolved. All right, thank you for your patience. Um, so as I mentioned, the hardware aspects of the personnel management kiosk, it's currently only available in a pedestal format, which is what you see on your screen right now. Um, so it's a dual-sided unit with one side, as you can see, um, is rounded and the other side is flat. It's also available with a graphic wrap option. Um, and if a graphic wrap is something that you're interested in, whether you're looking to display your logo or some messaging, uh, the graphic templates can be downloaded on our website. We will soon be offering a countertop version as well. Um, like the freestanding pedestal version, it is also dual-sided, rounded on one side, flat on the other. Um, and it too is available with a graphic if that is an option that you are interested in. The software aspect of the personnel management kiosk, each board level, so each Personnel management kiosk is equipped with a board level solution. Some of the features of the board level software include LAN and Wi-Fi connectivity, FCC and CE certification, a 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit temperature variance, the ability to recognize up to 20,000 faces, and the ability to integrate with voice prompts. So if you uh, do get a personal management kiosk and you choose to utilize the board level solution that is equipped on the kiosk already, this is what the back end of the device looks like. Some of the temperature settings that come with the device include a body temperature test, 
which you are able to turn on or off to disable the temperature reading feature on the kiosk, a compensation temperature calibration, which offsets the red temperature and can calibrate the, the device to account for ambient or environmental temperature changes, an alarm threshold, which can be displayed in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit and indicates the value at which a temperature alarm is triggered, a body temperature alarm, which dictates whether or not an alarm will sound when a user exceeds the temperature threshold, mask detection, which can also be turned on or off. If users check in without wearing a mask and mask detection is on, they'll be denied entry even if their temperature is normal. And finally, stranger mode. When stranger mode is off, strangers or guests, visitors, however you want to classify them, will be denied access and only registered users will be allowed to enter. The word level solution is also equipped with facial recognition software. Employees or other approved visitors can be easily added to the face database in a matter of seconds. Some of the informational fields that the device collects includes name, type, whether that's staff, visitor, etc., an expiration date, as well as a picture. Coming soon, Meridian will be offering M0 Manage for our personnel management kiosk. M0 Manage is Meridian's remote management software, and it's been an hour software offering for a number of years, um, but it's currently in development for use specifically with the personnel management kiosk. Once released, it will offer a variety of enhanced features that will complement the existing board level software that we just discussed. N0 Manage will be accessible from any computer connected to the internet, and it will allow kiosks admi kiosk administrators to utilize the software to remotely manage all of their personnel management kiosk deployments from one central location. Once released, some of the features of the software will include the ability to bulk upload and edit a list of employees and their pictures, block temperatures, send alerts, retrieve reports, view temperature scans and images, check PMK endpoints, determine if kiosks are online and connected to the server, change in-app settings and configurations, add kiosk groups, and administrators will be able to access a dashboard portal with rolling security view and real-time scans and updates. That is the conclusion of our overview of the hardware and software uh, currently available on the personnel management kiosk. As I mentioned, M0 Manage is currently in development, um, but will be rolled out soon. If you do have any questions, um, feel free to start submitting them now, and I will read them out for our panel to address and answer. The first question asks, can I get an output on the temperature alarm? Yeah, so there's a couple of options for the temperature alarm. Uh, if you have M0 Manage, uh, you'll be able to uh, send an email as an output uh, to notify you if uh, if there's an alarm condition. Uh, there's also a sound uh, that's generated by the kiosk in the alarm mode, so it would be an audible alarm. So those are the two outputs. The next question asks, what is the ETA release date for the M0 Manage software? We should be signing customers up uh, on the 20th uh, on a limited scale, so um, it, we will uh, have more information on uh, the release program uh, on the 20th. Next question asks, is it possible to create a backup of the database? Uh, if you have a standalone kiosk, uh, no. Uh, 
the centralized management server uh, subscription will be automatically backed up for you and, and there's export and import capabilities. Next question asks, is there an option to stream media on the display? There is uh, an attract loop uh, that is displayed when the unit is in standby, but uh, currently it's not customizable. If you want to customize that with your own signage, I think we can coordinate, depending on the quantity of units you have on order, uh, coordinate a special build for you that would uh, perhaps have custom signage, uh, but we would need to... Uh, uh, we would need to discuss that in more detail. So you should email sales at M0 and, and say the quantity of the order and uh, and uh, the, the types of media you wish to show on the device. And then we can coordinate uh, a, perhaps a custom build or if there's development fee, uh, we would quote that at the time. Next question asks, can we attach an external display as a duplicate? Uh, you can uh, install some license screen sharing capabilities on the device uh, if you wish. Uh, that would uh, mirror the screen. Uh, so that, that's one route. There's, there's packages available that, that does that. Next question asks, what are the data export options beyond an SD card? If it's an M0 manage, it can uh, be downloaded into an Excel spreadsheet. So it'd be uh, something you can export uh, from the centralized managed server. Also, it's available by APIs, and you can also browse uh, the data and search and organize and sort through the browser. Next question asks, is there the ability to apply a customer logo? Yeah, so uh, yeah customer... there will be uh, through M0 Manage. Uh, uh, however, uh, you need to have the, uh, the information bar enabled, which is typically off. So um, by turning the information bar on and then using the M0 Manage subscription, you can set a logo. From a hardware perspective too, if you would like a logo on like a graphic wrap or something, um, that is an, also an available option and those yeah. templates are available for download on our website. Um, our sales executive can help you with that process as well. The next question asks, what exactly is stored on the PMK and how long is this data stored? It depends on the uh, configuration of the device. Uh, if you have um, guest record uh, off and you don't have any employees, then nothing is recorded. Uh, if you have a uh, guest record on, it will anonymously log um, the, the entry uh, time and data um, uh, related to that employee that person so it would be a photo of the time of entry and the temperature so you can toggle that mode on and off uh, stranger record on or off so if stranger record is off then it won't record any strangers but if you use employees it will log employees so their name their pin um, the photo at the time they entered and the temperature which is data that can be exported. Uh, as for how long that data appears, that depends on your usage because there's a one gigabyte uh, storage history. So that's a rolling history. So it depends, uh, it's about 3000 uh, entries and that can be exported again. Uh, as, as that fills up, it'll roll and overwrite the previous entries. So uh, it's perpetually a gigabyte of history there. So. It could be a day or a week of history, depending on how many people pass through your facility. The next question asks, how does the back end work for door access? There's three ways. Um, one is that you can connect your, uh, your PMK device uh, via relay, um, which is a two wire output. It will close a circuit, which 
uh, signals a door or a gate to open. Uh, there's also uh, a ligand output interface that um, can be connected to uh, a door controller uh, that outputs uh, a, a, an ID of the person recognized that needs to be an employee to output. So it will output the employee ID. The next question asks, how is this affected by HIPAA? You'll have to uh, discuss this internally with your compliance officer for HIPAA. Um, we don't have any HIPAA certifications and uh, we can answer any questions you have about HIPAA. There's some FAQs on our site, but uh, you'll have to um, sort that out on an base, uh, individual basis. Next question asks, can I connect my reader to the input and with a valid image, temperature, and mask, and then have it pass through the Wigand information? Uh, the only thing that the Wigand will transmit is uh, 24 or 32-bit output. Um, that is either the employee ID or a badge if you have a, a, a uh, IC card reader uh, option in the device. Uh, so it's only those two things and it's transmitted only if there's a successful temperature scan. So um, that's the limit of what you can do with that uh, particular integration. Next question asks, how can I download M0 Manage or is this something that needs to be purchased separately? It's something that needs to be purchased separately. Um, there is an on-premise or a hosted option. The on-premise will be available at a later date. Hosting will be uh, launched uh, uh, on the 20th uh, for uh, on a limited scale and then broader scale shortly following. And then subsequent to that will be uh, on-premise options uh, where you can install a pre-configured virtual machine in your in your facilities that uh, that you can subscribe to license uh, the connections from your devices to uh, uh, to connect there. Next question asks: Is network connectivity required at all times or only during updates? When it's a standalone, it's generally not required at all. Um, for updates, you would use a USB jump drive anyway, so it's not really required. Um, if if you have M0 Manage, uh, it would it would need network connectivity constantly uh, in order to connect and, and receive updates. Next question asks: If the unit crashes, can the database be fully restored from the cloud backup? Yeah, so there's synchronization if you have M0 Manage uh, subscription, so the decentralized database, and then each time the device starts up or you add a new device, it will synchronize your employee database with the local database. Next question asks, how do you power the device on? Uh, I think, believe it's just a regular uh, 120 volt connection. So you just literally plug it into the wall and it will power up. It's a pretty easy setup process. Next question asks, what is the production delivery lead time for the kiosks? Our current lead time is 45 days from the date that Meridian receives a purchase order. Next question asks, how long does a firmware update take? Is there one available? Uh, there is a firmware update available and uh, it's uh, for the thermal camera. Uh, and uh, we would update only if that's needed. Um, you can copy the thermal uh, image to a USB jump drive. I walk over to the unit and there's a menu system you go into uh, options and then update thermal firmware and it takes about 10 seconds uh, once uh, you get to that menu with the USB jump drive so it's probably it takes you longer to uh, connect the the jump jump drive to the device than it would to update 
which is only a matter of seconds. Next question asks, do employees have to touch the temperature sensor? No, it's, uh, it's it, the scan works uh, from two to two to three feet back, um, but off the ideal range for thermal imaging is about a foot and a half from the, the sensor at the top. It's also advisable not to touch the sensor. Correct, yeah. Next question asks, where can we find the screen mirror software? Uh, one of them is it's a licensed product, so you'd have to um, you'd have to purchase a commercial license. But it's uh, I believe it's uh, use let me visor V Y Z O R. And uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. I was just gonna say, yeah, it's uh, it's from the Chrome Store. You can you can download that visor, and Next you need to be question. on the local area network for that to work. Uh, Next question ahead. asks about exposed UI ports. Are there any available? Uh, uh, UI ports, so I guess I/O ports. Um, there's uh, a couple of interfaces available. Um, the Wigand uh, the relay. There's actually a serial port um, through configurations. You can t uh, enable some data to come out of a serial port as well. Um, it's not widely used. Um, there is an API as well through M0 Manage, so you'd be able to access data from there. I, ho I hope that answers the question. I'm not too clear on what they mean by uh, UI port. Next question says, you mentioned that there were approximately 3,000 images saved on the board before it begins to overwrite. Is there a right. way to separate company employees versus guests? to avoid overriding employees that are registered in the system. No, okay, so just to clarify that, there's there's two separate storage areas. Uh, one is an employee database can be stored, uh, faces and that of your employee database, that's not part of that overwrite. There's a separate area that's a gig, uh, allocated to a gigabyte of entry history, and that's what's overriding. It doesn't affect the employee database, I think that so, sorry if that caused any confusion by what I said, but uh, uh, they're, they're completely isolated things. So, um, and and when you export in in the spreadsheet, you're going to see the the visitor type. So it will say if it's an employee or a guest. So you'll be able to filter and sort uh, in your, your uh, Excel or other spreadsheet software. Next question asks. Are any of the ports going to be available without having to remove the top in the future? Uh, well, we've we've actually secured the port um, behind some security screws. The reason is for security, um, so that it's not easily accessible. Um, and we don't. I don't believe there's any plans to make that uh, less secure. Um, Next question I don't, asks. I don't know if, go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. Or Dominic, yeah. do you want to? Oh, chime I was going to say I don't know if those can, Dom. Do you know if those screw, security screws can be replaced with regular screws or hand um, screws? Or? Uh, we're working on a version that has uh, secondary screws on there, so you can remove those screws and I believe just rotate um, the top piece to get access okay. to a USB port. So there's um, there's something that we're working on, but it's not available yet. Okay. Great. Next question asks, is the unit adjustable or will the height ever be adjustable? I believe there's two height versions of our unit, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a, a lower unit, uh, usually used in, in schools, and then a regular height unit. It also has a, a tilting capability, so um, if, if you need, you can tilt the head uh, it pivots uh, up and down slightly uh, to accommodate any uh, immediate height differences. And the next question asks, how heavy is the unit? 
the freestanding version is about 35 pounds, so not very heavy. Looks like that um, was our last question. I'll give it a couple more minutes just in case anybody has a question to submit. Um, otherwise, a recording of this webinar will be emailed to all attendees uh, two hours after the conclusion of the webinar. It will also be available to view on our website um, following the webinar. It doesn't, oh, we do have one more question coming in. Um, question asks, are there any kind of locks used to lock the unit down to prevent theft? Um, we don't send it, them out with locks, but on the base plate, you'll see there are two small holes on the side that you can actually bolt it down. I believe some customers may be using um, bike chains or something of the sort, but you can bolt the base plate down if you need. Next question asks, do you offer resources on best practices for implementation? Um, we do have recommendations as far as um, using the unit only indoors, um, what, what types of locations uh, are the best places to place the unit, um, and those are available on our website. There is also an ISO document, I believe, ISO slash TR 13154-2017 that um, includes some guidelines for um, organizations when they're using uh, uh, equipment such as ours. Dominic, can you repeat that ISO? Uh, yes. They asked for you to repeat it. <laughs> it is ISO uh, slash backslash TR one three one five four. So thank you. Um, next question asks: Can you submit reports by email from the unit? Uh, receive an alert by email is that can what you i heard submit reports by email oh, from the reports no you can um if you have m0 manage uh the only thing you can do is uh, log into the portal and then export uh, um, we don't we don't transmit or have any plans to transmit uh, this type of data uh, through any means such as email All right, and that was the conclusion of all of our questions. Thank you to all of our attendees for joining and thank you to our Meridian panel for being here as well. Um, if anyone has any further questions that may come up later in the day, feel free to email sales at m0.com and we will make sure to get your additional questions answered for you. Thank you all for attending. <laughs>